I am Alon Oya's mother, and I really appreciate you coming and then to the square and seeing everything that's going on. Delegation of professors and alumni from the University of Pennsylvania came to Israel to offer support for the families of the hostages. Music is a language that transcends space and time, and on this day, there was not a dry eye in Hostage Square. This is the piano of Alone Ohel, a 22-year-old jazz and classical music pianist who remains a hostage in Gaza. Music is part of his life. He plays all the time. He's like, he moves through music. Even when he walks, he walks through music. I am sure of it that he's like over there now, sitting, whatever he's doing, he's like doing this with his hands and, and playing in his head music. I, I know this. Alone narrowly escaped the Nova Music Festival and hid in a bomb shelter with 30 people before Hamas terrorists kidnapped Alone and three others and killed 19 others. It's really important for me for people to know that he is a person, that he has a life, that he's, he's, he's wonderful and, it's, and he's, he's my son and I want him to come back home. But the thing is, is that this won't happen if the world doesn't come and help us, Israel. And the fact is, is that we need everybody to be with us. A few weeks later, people were knocking on our doors saying we cannot stay in America or in the UK or in Australia while our brothers and sisters are here suffering. We cannot be silent and therefore we must come and show up. To me, the reactivation of trauma in my own personal experience was because I was in a Hamas terror attack in 1994 on October the 9th of 1994. Really? And it took me 24 years to come back to Israel after that attack. Michael Kahana is one of dozens of people on the University of Pennsylvania trip. The psychology professor, who happens to be a distant cousin of the Ohel family, teaches psychology of human memory, a subject that hits very close to home. I was here for an academic visit and I went out to dinner and I met Hamas 29 years ago when uh, Hamas terrorists shot automatic weapons and threw hand grenades at, uh, in the restaurant where I was. And it wasn't until the massacre of October 7th that specific memories of his own trauma came to light. 24 years after the trauma, I came back to Israel and I couldn't remember what happened. I went with my kids back to the restaurant and I couldn't remember details of what happened. And on October the 9th, 8th, 9th, 10th at night, I started to remember. And I heard the screams, things I hadn't heard in my head in almost 25 years. So that was the shock to me. Also shocking to the Jewish world and beyond is the vitriolic anti-Semitism and violence against Jews at Ivy League universities. F the Jews. Those words were said not here on Amsterdam, not on Broadway. Those words were said in Jerome Green Hall, Columbia's law school building. Here I am experiencing hate. Hate is what people on our college campus fields towards us as we walk by simply because we are Jewish. My Jewish sisters and brothers and I are on the receiving end of death threats from our peers. Undergraduates who have filed reports about these incidents have been left with no emotional support, no feedback, and no consequences for the perpetrators of these hateful actions. And what's even more inhumane is the throngs of people tearing down posters of the Israeli hostages still in captivity in Gaza. You know, all over New York and the world, people are ripping down posters of your son. Does it make it's, you it's, angry? Yeah, it's, of course, because he is a citizen. He didn't do anything. He went to an Nova Festival. He, he's a, you know innocent bystander. He didn't fight anybody. He wasn't in war. We weren't in war. They came in and they took him.
you know, think about it. You know, in the United States, somebody comes in and just takes anyone who wants to, and you're fine with it. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. How can you be fine with a person that is in your country, you're supposed to be feel, feel safe, and somebody comes and whips you out of your country and takes you hostage? This is not supposed to happen. And everybody who's everywhere in the world, and they're thinking that everything is fine, well, terrorism is going to come to you. And they're going to do it to you. And they're going to rip your sons and daughters, uh, you know, posters and say, well, that's not my problem. And you're, and that's not okay. That is not okay. Because my son is important. And the University of Pennsylvania's president, Liz McGill, and Harvard's president, Claudine Gay, did nothing to stop the anti-Semitic violence and calls for Jewish genocide. And they didn't even back down during December's congressional hearing. I am asking, specifically calling for the genocide of Jews, does that constitute bullying or harassment? If it is directed and severe or pervasive, it is harassment. So the answer is yes. It is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. It's a context-dependent decision. That's your testimony today. Calling for the genocide of Jews is depending upon the context. It amounts to bullying, harassment, intimidation. That is actionable conduct, and we do take action. So the answer is yes, that calling for the genocide of Jews violates Harvard Code of Conduct, correct? Again, it depends on the context. It does not depend on the context. The answer is yes, and this is why you should resign. These are unacceptable answers across the board. McGill and Gay have since resigned, but the scars still run deep. I think these are tensions and, uh, and problems that are thousands of years old, and this is uh, a sad uh, valley in that history, and I hope that we can improve things, but I think it's a constant fight that'll, and, and that'll go on forever, really. I hope it doesn't, but that's what history tells us. One way to begin to make a change is to bring people to Israel to experience the relics of the horrors of October 7th firsthand. They need to see this. They need to meet the families. This is not an issue of politics. October 7th is not about who you vote for or which position you have on political issues. This is about evil. This is about Hamas, ISIS, Al-Qaeda. It's about cults of death that just want to kill and destroy. Even still, Edith Ohel has unwavering faith that music can heal the binds of hate. And on January 14th, a piano in Alone's honor will be placed in central Berlin and New York City, inviting musicians to come play and bring on the spirit to bring Alone home. I use music because music is an international you know, language and everybody understands that. And music is beautiful because my son is beautiful and using music to fight is a good way because everybody can understand that. They can understand that my son loves life, loves music. Do you think he knows that he's connecting, that knows that his piano is here, that people are coming and connecting to him? I think so, I think so, because I believe in energy and I believe that if I'm doing something for him, that he will feel it because he's part of me. That helps me cope. Emily Francis, I-24 News.